hello there and welcome back to another review so today I thought we'd have a look at the classic the classic ring or the ring however you want to call it some people call it the ring some say the ring um, but it doesn't really matter um, got the ring trilogy here ready to go um, I do want to mix things up as I keep mentioning on this channel because I've reviewed quite a lot of kung fu movies a lot of Hong Kong movies but I do want to do Japanese movies as well I do want I just want to do films from the world over give you guys different movie reviews um, from here there and everywhere so we'll be having a look at the ring today made back in 1998 and directed by Hideo Nakata and starring Nanoko Matsushima and Hiroki Sanada now there is no denying how popular and huge this film was right I think everybody who was around at the time the ring was a bit of a like a phenomenon right it was huge there you can't deny the impact of this movie what it did for not just horror films but Japanese horror as well it was very much the film that put the J horror um, Japanese horror on the map and that whole movement that happened in sort of the, if you remember sort of the late 90s and early 2000s films like the grudge uh dark water was another one um I want to review all these movies. Um, of course, the Hollywood we had the Hollywood remakes that followed as well, but we will be looking at the original Ring today. And I think it's safe to say most of us have probably seen this movie. I think we can assume most of us have seen this film, um, so I probably won't be spoiling anything here. But um, if you don't want to know the plot to this movie or you've never seen it, please stop watching now. Um, but we will be looking at the Ring. Um, it, but it was one of their movies when it came out. It was very, it was very much one of their movies. You got to see it, right? You've got to see this film, like the premise, the setup, and it's about this videotape. And if you watch it, you die. And you know, but it, it was like you've got to see it. You've got to, like it's it's different. It's original. You, you, one of them. It was one of them films. You know, um, based on the 19, 19, I think it was ninety one. Uh, the novel come out uh, by Koji Suzuki. Um, whilst the film was met with much acclaim, and rightly so, the film is not perfect by any means. I never even thought it was perfect back in the day. I enjoyed it, but I wasn't sort of caught up in the hype train as much as some people were. Um, but what the film does well, um, you know, it, like I say, it's, it's acclaimed and everything, but what the film is, is it's, it's, it's extremely iconic, right, this film. And it should always be highly regarded for being in many ways groundbreaking and revolutionary, to, and to which... By and large, it sort of is. Um, you have to remember at the time when this came out, US horror was mainly films such as sort of Halloween H2O we had going on and like films like Urban Legend or like I Know What You Did Last Summer. Very much that teen horror slasher thing that was going on. Um, Ring was like horror done intelligently, right? Like it was horror with a, tr like a twist, horror with something new to offer. And there is a reason why this film um, has sort of influenced so much. It's had sequels, it's had remakes, all this kind of thing, um, because it just stood out. It was just fresh. It was, you know, like sort of when Wes Craven done Scream um, and it just took the horror and just done something new done something fresh put a spin on things whatever you want to call it and ring is sort of like that it was different you know it was it was horror with a twist it was horror like i say done intelligently i think when the film uh when it came out in hong kong it, i think it even surpassed the matrix at the box office i believe i think it even done better financially than what the matrix did um was sort of the highest gross in japanese movie um there for a number of years i think really in many ways it was largely the fit this film and the blair witch project in, the, in like sort of the late 90s era that really put horror sort of back on the map i absolutely think, still think the original blair witch is um i think it's one of the best films ever made um not um I just uh, it was a film that I think when not so much the, well not I say the best ones ever made I just think uh, for sheer originality and for sheer atmosphere um, in terms of like horror movies I think this like I say The Ring and sort of Blair Witch um, uh, to me in my eyes really did that 98-99 time it's them two films um, probably more so than any others there are others but they really did put horror back on the map and like I say, injecting it with something fresh and giving it the whole genre something new to say. Like I mentioned, whilst in my eyes not a perfect movie, uh, you can't knock Ring and just what it did for the genre. The film can be somewhat slow paced, but in many ways that is what adds to the movie. Like it is very much a slow burner. Um, but I think that, that works to the film's advantage, right? That, I think that helps it rather than sort of heeds it. It is a film um, rather about atmosphere and just the premise rather than giving you sort of jump scares every five minutes um, like it seems very well every sort of Western horror film does nowadays every single film you see 
if it's a horror film, if it's especially if it's a teen horror film, there's jump scares everywhere, like all the time. So the film opens with these two girls, Tomoko and Masumi, who are like having like a sleepover. Tomoko admits that she saw a weird videotape the other day and that it's been one week since she saw it. This tape already has a bit of a legend about it, sort of around it, sort of even at this point in the movie. Like as soon as we get the idea of the tape, it's already sort of doing the rounds. We're like this tape is sort of it's it's known. Um Though she does say initially she is only joking, then the phone rings and she then says it's true what she just said and the phone call was just from her mum. The other girl goes to the toilet and the TV turns on by itself. She turns around, the camera flashes white and she's sort of killed, right? So we don't know what killed her, what's going on. As I say, she thinks that you, she tells this story and you, then you think she's lying about it then it turns out she's not lying, but then I say she gets killed. I mean, you know, you know, you know the premise and everything, right? So you watch the tape the premise of the film, you know the premise, you watch the film, the phone rings, you have seven days to live, okay, that's the whole setup, I mean, I assume we all know that, I assume all of us have seen this film, so this review, I'm probably telling you nothing new, there's nothing fresh at all that I'm telling you about, but just go through it anyway, so we meet our lead, uh, Ryoku Asakawa, who is like a news reporter, and finds out from like school kids that there is this video circulating that makes you die in one week, and shown on the channel in the Izu Peninsula late at night. Um, she finds this article about a young couple who were found dead in their car and wants to find their school. We meet her son, Yoichi, and they go to Tomoko's funeral. She was like sort of her aunt, I believe. I think that was her relation to sort of Tomoko. Um, I think she was her aunt. And what is bizarre, though, is that it's like a closed coffin and no one knows exactly what she died of. Right? So it's sort of suspicious circumstances. It's a closed coffin. What exactly is going on? Rico finds out from some students they watched a video, right? They watched a video. She finds footage of the couple that died in the car, and again, nothing in the autopsy, and the car doors were locked. And what is amazing watching this film recently is just how well the film holds up even now. I think it, it's still, it's not as scary sort of as when you first see it, um, but it still holds your attention, and you still do get invested. Um, and like I say, when I mentioned just now about atmosphere, that's the one thing that Ring above all else does really well it's got a brooding atmosphere running through it from start to finish and it's it doesn't stop this atmosphere like i say it is slow paced it's a very very slow paced horror um but the atmosphere really does carry that um even when it does slow down as i mentioned just way ahead of his time um not going for all out gore horror um typical teens getting like you know a slasher film this was different this was like i say very ahead of its time so rico finds a roll of film that hasn't been developed and sees a photo develops and sees a photo of the kid like these kids all with their faces blurred so she decides to like set off for izu to find the place where these kids were staying in the photo and just happens to find the place which i think she just deduces from like one photo um <laughs> i think she sort of does anyway i could be wrong she finds a tape at the main desk, an unmarked one, which she watches, and she goes into like this weird sort of semi-trance. The phone rings, and she thinks she sees a weird reflection in the TV. Uh, as I mentioned, we have Hiroyuki Sanada here as her ex-sort of psychic husband, Ryuji, and he's like a, has like a sixth sense or supernatural thing going on, which is always helpful. You know, if you think you're being cursed, it does help if your ex-husband or your ex-partner is sort of like clairvoyant or has something to do with the supernatural or can detect auras and spirits or God knows what else. So that's always comes in handy if you've been cursed and she gets him to take like a photo of her and her face is all blurred and deformed in the photo he watches the video and it's like look it's not deaf yet the fact is someone made this and they're like right someone made this tape we're going to get to the root of it we're going to see what you know try and piece this together and then you have probably one of the creepiest scenes in the movie for me um and it's probably not the creepiest scene that many people think of but the creepiest scene in the movie for me is when ryuji is sitting on a bench in the street and we have these like this feet walking towards him without him looking up and him saying was it you and that doesn't sound scary me describing that but it just creeps me out the way that he's sort of sitting there he's not looking up and these feet sort of approach him and it's for whatever reason it's like daylight but it's freaky like it is so weird um I don't know if it's just the way it's shot, I don't know, but it's a really, really creepy scene. Um, 
So she phones around the guest list at the like the resort hotel, and, and in her own words, um, she goes, "Well, they all sounded normal, and not like they would make a tape like this." Um, that's like, she sort sort of phones round, phones around everybody in the hotel, and she's just like, "Well, they sound normal. I don't, I don't think they made the tape." So she just goes on sort of what they sound like. So she makes Ryuji a copy of the tape, and they start going through the tape in slow motion. As I say, for the bulk of the movie, that n- not a lot really happens. There's not really an awful lot in the film that actually happens. Um, you know, as such, and there are a few plot conveniences that just happen just because you can't deny, you know, some, some of the things that do happen. It is a bit okay. Like I say, for example, her ex being like a sort of, he can detect sixth sense, he can, he's got sixth sense capabilities, he can detect, you know, presences or whatever. Little things that are a little bit convenient in terms of the plot, but, you know, it's fine. But you, as I say, you can't deny the atmosphere. It's not even, it's not really, I would say, scary. I would just, I would go, I would sum up Ring in that it's a very sort of unsettling movie. I think that's the best way to sort of describe it. I wouldn't say it's all out scary. Even when I watched it the first time, I wasn't like, oh my God, I'd like brick my pants or anything. But it does have, a, like I said, a very strong, unsettling sort of atmosphere running through it. And whilst going through the tape in slow motion, they pick up some sort of dialect that is about brine, goblins, and some volcano, and that is like Oshima di- dialect. And they find out the woman on the tape was the one who like predicted the eruption of the volcano. She threw herself in in her like in, and her name being Shizuku Yamamura, or Shizuku, sorry, Yamamura, Yuichi Riko. Um, you, sh- Yuichi, Raiko and Ryuji's son ends up watching the tape, as as he said, Tomoko told him to. A prof- we find out a professor did experiments on Shizuku in, to- in Tokyo, and apparently we learned she had like a daughter. So where they stay, Ryuko and her ex-husband just so happen to find the mirror that is present in the video. As I say, little things that are a bit sort of convenient. Um, we have a flashback of vision where we see the daughter, Sadako, killed a journalist by just making him drop down dead. Um, so basically this this professor did experiments on this woman um she also had a daughter who also had powers as well and like i say she made this guy drop dead uh ryuji says the tape is not of this world and after realizing that he had no phone call after he watched the tape they go back to the cabin thinking that is where sadako died before it was built um um, as mentioned, the plot does have a few conveniences, and some t- some things you'll be explained more. I mean, mere- like things you think are going to be explained more are sort of merely glanced over. You think, okay, they might expand on that a bit more. They might tell us it's like no, it's sort of just you know you skipped over just so we can get uh, the plot sort of advance. So obviously the cabin is owned and does have owners, but they just get there and just start smashing the place up, right? And a lot of the time we're where they deduce and realise it's because her husband just so happens, he's just, like I say, he's just, he got, gets visions, right? So a lot of the time when they think, oh, this, oh, we'll do that, oh, oh we figured that out, it's because he gets these visions. Um, and they start digging underneath it and find a well. We learn it was the prof, like professor who killed the girl and who shoved her in the well. Again, sort of another vision um, with the tape and everything in this movie. It's never explained as such who, who made the tape in the movie. Um, it's That's not sort of made clear where it come from. Um, I just assumed like she was able to sort of transmit her rage onto this tape um, is sort of how I sort of interpreted it. Um that never really gone into with this movie. Um, I think you just, it's one of them movies like they give you sort of an overview and you sort of piece it together. Talking about this film isolated sort of on its own without the sequels and anything. I'm talking just about Strictly. I know there's loads of theories and whatever, um, but I'm just talking about this film as a commodity on its own. I don't really expand on much on the originality of the tape, like I say, where it come from, who made it. So... Ryuji sort of lowers himself into the well. Um, yeah, you know, forget that. I'm not going down a well where some, like, psychic crazy person was sort of lowered in there who can just make people drop dead. So they sort of lowers himself into the well, looking for her remains. And what they're hoping to do is if they find the remains... I mean, that's another thing. They, they find the remains, I suppose, give her a proper resting place, I assume. So they begin to drain the well with buckets. We have that great tenseness as they are doing it, as working against the clock, as Riku's time is running out. Ryuji even slaps Riko at one point, uh, Ryuko, and just as she's all but given up, and he's like, you know, 
he started saying she's coming for our son and because he's seen the tape as well as i mentioned and after a while she finds the remains which sort of grab her at one point which freaked me out that was quite scary the way the arm sort of grabs her so they assume at this point after finding the remains that the curse is sort of lifted right they assume okay well we've done our bit the curse is lifted we, we should be safe that night however ryuji's tv switches on by itself and we have the scene which most people always take from this movie with the crawling uh through the tv which is it i mean they even put that on the front of this i mean talk about spoil it they really shouldn't do that because it's like if you've never seen this before and you want to watch them in order they've already given away sort of what's going to happen at the end of the movie by the cover of this dvd box set i don't know what so many people there's a lot of um, I've seen so many DVD and Blu-ray covers where they they have the poster or the artwork or whatever you want to call it, and it's on the front, and it's like that that's a bit of the twist in the movie, or that's meant to be you're not meant to give that away. Um, sort of what they've done with that box set here. Um, but as I say, most people remember this end scene with the crawling through the TV, which again still works amazingly well. That end, and that's the thing that sticks with you when when I watch this the first time. It is the ending that you you're waiting to see because it's it's freaky as hell, right? It really, it re but it still works amazingly well. And I think they actually shot. I think the way they did it, I think they shot it backwards um, at first, and then sort of reversed the film to make her walk sort of her walk sort of more jarring and unsettling than what it is. I mean, why is a girl in white when you can't see her face just so creepy? Like, why is that such a freaky image? But, you know, I mean, if it was me, I just would have bolted out the room. But, you know, he doesn't. So Ryuji dies as he gets frightened to death. And so Reiko is so confused as the curse was lifted from her and he's trying to figure out sort of <coughs> what she did or didn't do. Sort of like where she hasn't died, but he has. Uh, it's then revealed that if you copy the tape and show it to someone else, you don't die uh, in the end. So it never ends. And I think um, sort of that's where the title comes from. That's sort of how I've interpreted the like a ring, like it's a like a continuous loop, um, like a never-ending circle kind of thing. Like it has no end. I could be wrong, um, but like I say, if you copy the tape, show it to somebody else, sort of the curse is lifted. Obviously, a lot of interpretations with the movie and the mythology behind it all. Um, and like I said, I'm sure loads of you will correct me on things I've said in this and, you know, about what, uh, you know, with the, with the character and um, Shizuku and everything. But just trying to go through it as quick as possible. And it's like Sudoku, uh, Sadako, sorry, I should say, Sudoku. Um, but as I said, I just wanted to go through the, the film just as it was on its own. Um, like I say, the tail man in the video, the mirror sequence of Sadako's mother, uh, the weird, almost alien looking eye. Um, I did not try to go too deep into all the meaning and the theories behind all of that today. I could do another video about that completely. Um, I just wanted to give a brief o overview of the movie. And it's one that's, as I say, it's a film that still holds up. Um, and it's a very important, if not probably one of the most important film of sort of of the J horror, the Japanese horror sort of genre. And definitely the film that helped put it on the map anyway. I think it's a film that's largely responsible for, you know, really putting it out there, you know, so people take notice. Um, I will review all the Ring movies as well as Spiral, uh, which is sort of like the sequel a lot of people forget as it sort of come out at the same time as this movie. And it was the sequel until it didn't do that well and they sort of replaced it with ring two uh made back in 1999 um but if you've never seen this movie i mean where have you been where have you been if you've never seen this movie please go check it out um but like it's like it's like with films like say six cents it's one of their movies that i'm pretty sure like sort of everybody has seen by now so i'm sure in this review i'm not telling you anything new you know, you know about The Ring, you've heard about The Ring, it's been spoofed, it's been remade, we've had sequels, all that. We all know sort of what happens in The Ring. But if you've never seen it, go and check it out. But it, it, it's watching it again recently, it's still a very, um, like I say, not scary. I don't think it's scary, I wouldn't, but I think it's very extremely atmospheric and it's a very, very unsettling film. But it still holds your attention. And watching it again, like I say, recently, it still holds up and it's, it's a film that I think everybody at some point should uh, definitely see so thank you very much indeed for watching hope you enjoyed the review i'll see you again soon don't concentrate on the finger or you will miss all that heavenly glory